Hi everyone, and welcome to the second installment of Lesser Known History, Homeschool History Lessons, where every month we take a look at people or events that are important to history, but that you may not have heard about. So welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the Soviet Night Witches. So who were the Night Witches? Well, they were uh, female Soviet fighter pilots of World War II. They comprised the all-female 588th Night Bomber Regiment. The German soldiers had a name for these female pilots, the Nachtexen, which translates to Night Witches. The Germans called them this because their planes would make a soft whoosh sound as they glided down to drop their bombs on the enemy. The Germans thought this sounded like witches on broomsticks. The Soviet Union was the world's first nation to let women fly combat missions and the only nation in World War II to allow women to fly and kill in combat missions. In total, these women flew over 30,000 missions and dropped more than 23,000 tons of bombs on German targets during World War II. All of their flights were done under the cover of night. These pilots also did 150 supply drops, delivering food and ammo to Soviet forces. At the height of their strength, they had 42 all-female crews that were flying multiple runs a night as soon as the sun set. Some women would do up to 18 bombing runs in a single night. The German military were so afraid of these night witches that they would automatically give any soldier who shot one down the highest order in their military, the Order of the Iron Cross. The Germans had several theories about why these women were so tough and effective. They thought that these women had been experimented on and that they had somehow gained the ability to see at night, like cats. The other theory was that they were master criminals that had been conscripted and sent to the front lines as punishment. These were the theories that the Germans uh, floated around because it just didn't make any sense to them why these women were so tough and effective. In total, the Night Witches only lost 30 pilots during the war. 23 of these night witches were given the honor of heroes of the Soviet Union. These were all young women, most of whom had zero flying experience before signing up. The ages of these women ranged from 17 to 26 years old. It usually took several years to train to become a fighter pilot, and these women only had a couple of months. So here is a brief timeline of the night witches. In 1933, Marina Raskova becomes the first Soviet woman to pass the aviation exam and is licensed as a pilot. In 1934, Raskova is the first Soviet, Soviet woman to become a professional air navigator. In 1938, Raskova makes a record-breaking flight against, across the Soviet Union. In September 1939, Germany invades Poland and World War II begins. In June 1941, the Soviet Union officially enters World War II. In summer 1941, Raskova approaches Joseph Stalin with the idea of forming a, a woman's aviation regiment as part of the Soviet Air Force and offers to lead it herself. In October 1941, Joseph Stalin orders the formation of a combat group of female aviators to be created and led by, by, by Marina Raskova. Nearly a thousand young women volunteer. In June 1942, one of Raskova's female aviator regiments, the 588th Night Bomber Aviation Regiment, also known as the Night Witches, make their first bombing run. Here is the brief timeline continued. In July 1942, the Soviet Army begins to defend the city of Stalingrad against the Germans. This battle keeps the Germans from moving deeper into the Soviet Union and becomes a turning point in the war. In December 1942, some squads from the 588th Regiment are commanded to stop the approach of an enemy ferry crossing the Terek River. One of the planes is shot down, but the female pilot and navigator survive. In January 1943, Marina Raskova dies in a flight accident. In July 1943, four female fighter pilots' planes are shot down by enemy fire. In 1944, three women are honored with medals as heroes of the Soviet Union, and by the end of the war, 23 of the Night Witches received this award. In May 1945, Germany surrenders to the Allies. September 1945, Japan surrenders, ending World War II. October 1945, the Night Witches, now known as the 46th Taman Guards Night Bomber Aviation Regiment, are released from duty. July 8, 2013, Nadia Popova, one of the most celebrated Night Witches, dies at the age of 91. 
So these women did not receive the warmest welcome when they were first, um, when their regiment was first created. Um, the Soviet military were very dismissive about women in the military, and many in the Soviet military found the idea of women flying in combat ridiculous and treated the women as second-class citizens. But these women did not let the fact that they were not respected by their male counterparts phase them. These women embraced their identities and are said to have painted their lips with navigational pencils and to have drawn flowers on the sides of their aircraft. These women were also not given the best uh, uniforms. Um, they were given inadequate uniforms, in fact. Uh, these women were given military uniforms that were made for bulkier male soldiers, and these uniforms did not fit the women. Um, these women were also given men's boots to wear, size 42 boots to be exact. These boots were too large for their feet, so the women used paper and cloth to stuff them so they could walk. The women were expected to dress and look the same as their male counterparts, and so their hair was cut short. As one of the pilots would recall later in an interview, we didn't recognize ourselves in the mirror. We saw boys there. In addition to their inadequate uniforms, they were also given uh, plywood biplanes to fly in. These women were given Polykarpov PO2 aircraft to fly. These were two-seated open cockpit biplanes that were obsolete even by the standards of the 1940s. These planes were from the 1920s and were used for crop dusting. These planes were made of plywood frames with stretched canvas over them. This is why their planes made a whooshing sound when they flew the wind would rustle through the canvas. These planes were light, slow, and provided absolutely no protection. The only benefit of these planes was that they had a slower stall speed than the Germans' planes. This made them hard to target and they could take off and land just about anywhere. But the exposed cockpits let in freezing wind, which often gave the pilots frostbite. These planes were so light that they couldn't carry any extra weight, so no radar, no radio, no guns, and no parachutes. And they had to fly at lower, more easily spotted altitudes. Without radar or radio, these women had to navigate using compasses, stopwatches, rulers, pencils, and flashlights. Each plane had a pilot and a navigator. Each plane could carry only two bombs, one under each wing. So as soon as one run was complete, the pilots would be rearmed and sent back out for another run. Because their planes were so vulnerable, they had to fly under the cover at night. Three planes would leave at a time, two to draw the enemy fire and one to hide in the darkness and drop the bombs. To stay hidden, the pilots would kill their engines when they got near their targets and simply glide over them, making a whooshing sound as they dropped their bombs. So the end of World War II um, came in 1945, and the last flight of the night which just took place around May 4th, 1945, and they flew within 37 miles of Berlin three days before Germany officially surrendered. The regiment was never officially disbanded. It was converted into the 46th Tamon Guards Night Bomber Aviation Regiment, which continued to fight for the Soviet Union. These women didn't receive much credit after the war, and even though they were the most highly decorated unit in the Soviet Air Force in World War II, the Night Witches were not included in the Victory Day Parade in Moscow because, quote, their planes were too slow. So here are some photos, articles, and more about the Night Witches. Here is a 1982 Soviet envelope commemorating the 40th anniversary of the founding of the 46th Guards Night Bomber Regiment. And here is a New York Times article that came out in January 17th, 1944. And you can see the caption over the photo is Russian girl pilots before taking off to battle Nazis. And it's a picture left to right of Lieutenant Lila Litvak, Lieutenant Katya Budonova, and Vera Kunivkova studying a map after receiving a combat order. And then the headline underneath is, many Nazi planes are the victims of Russian women fighter pilots. So here is another New York Times article. This is from January 10th, 1943. And this is about the death of Marina Raskova. The headline is Russian woman flyer killed on active duty. And it says, Major Raskova, heroine of the Soviet Union, widely known. 
and it talks about how she was killed in action and how it was announced and what and how she was a highly decorated officer and it's a really good article um, about Marina Raskova. So now uh, we're going to talk about the first night witch Marina Raskova and here is a picture of her from 1938. So here is Colonel Marina Raskova. There's a picture of her and um, she was born March 28th, 1912 and died January 4th, 1943. And here is a great quote from her. Dear sisters, the hour has come for harsh retribution. Stand in the ranks of the warriors for freedom. This was her speaking at an anti-fascist rally um, to women to get them motivated to volunteer. Um, she was born Marina Malanina. Uh, Marina wanted to be an opera singer as a child. She married in 1929 and had a child, Tanya, in 1930, and she got divorced in 1935. She was the first female navigator in the Soviet Union. Marina was known as the Soviet Amelia Earhart. She received hundreds of letters from women, young women all over the Russia who wanted to join the war and defend their country. She persuaded Stalin to allow women pilots into the military. Marina was killed in a plane crash in 1943. She was 31 years old when she died. And Marina received the first state funeral of World War II. And she was cremated and her ashes are in the Kremlin and they are still there to this day. So now we're gonna talk about a very famous flight that Marina Raskova was a part of, the flight of the Rodina. On September 24, 1938, Marina Raskova, Polina Osipenko, and Valentina Grizodubova set out on a very important flight on the plane Rodina. They wanted to set an inter international women's record for straight line distance flight with Marina as navigator, Valentina as pilot, and Polina as co-pilot. The plan was to fly from Moscow to Komsolomsk in the far east of Russia. In total, the flight took 26 hours and 29 minutes, a straight line distance of 3,663 miles, and a total distance of 3,999 miles. But not long after takeoff, bad weather set in and the plane was covered in a thick cloud. It was also cold. The temperature was well below zero and the plane became crusted with ice inside and out. The women knew that if too much ice formed on the wings, the plane would be impossible to control. So Valentina climbed higher to avoid the clouds that were causing the ice to form their instruments began to freeze because of the cold as well. So the radio stopped working and Marina and Valentina had to write notes to communicate with each other. Eventually the weather got better and they were able to see where they were. They had been flying nonstop for more than a day and then the low fuel light came on unexpectedly. They were an hour from their destination. The woman knew that they were going to run out of fuel in the middle of the Siberian wilderness. Valentina knew she would have to crash land the plane nose first and that the navigator's cabin would probably be crushed. So Valentina instructed Marina to bail out of the plane using a parachute. Marina made her first ever parachute jump in the middle of the Siberian forest. Valentina and Polina managed to crash land the plane and the plane was intact. Both women were unharmed and waited at the crash site for rescue. Unfortunately, Marina got turned around in the wilderness and had also forgotten her emergency kit and so she only had a couple of chocolate bars in her pockets. So for 10 days, Marina survived in the wilderness, living on berries and mushrooms. One evening during those 10 days and nights, Marina was confronted by a bear. Luckily, Marina had not forgotten her pistol and she shot at the bear, frightening it away. The rescue crew found the aircraft eight days after its crash landing. During the rescue effort, two search aircraft collided with each other and 16 people were killed in this crash. Eventually, Marina found her way to the crash site and was reunited with her crewmates. On November 2, 1938, all three women were decorated with the Hero of the Soviet Union Award. They were the first women ever to receive this honor and the only ones before World War II. So here is a picture of the um, women who were on the flight of the Rodina. And left to right is Polina Asipenko, Valentina Grizzo Dubova, and Marina Raskova. And they're in front of the plane Rodina. And here are a couple of stamps that Marina Raskova was put on. Um, the first is a Russian stamp in honor of the 100th birth anniversary of Marina Raskova in 2012. And the second was the Soviet Union stamp of Marina Raskova that came out in 1939. So here is another famous night witch. Her name was Nadezhda Nadia 
Popova. She was born December 17, 1921, and died July 6, 2013. Here's a great quote from her. I sometimes stare into the blackness and close my eyes. I can still imagine myself as a young girl up there in my little bomber. And I ask myself, Nadia, how did you do it? Um, she volunteered to be a military pilot, but the government initially barred women from combat and turned her away. Her brother was killed in a battle in 1941, and the Nazis commandeered her home to use as a Gestapo police station. She flew over 850 missions during the war. She earned multiple medals and the title of Hero of the Soviet Union. She was also awarded the Gold Star, the Order of Lenin, and the Order of the Red Star. She completed 18 bombing runs in a single night with navigator Yep. Katerina Ryabov. She walked away from one bombing run with 42 bullet holes in her plane, and she eventually became deputy commander of the regiment. And the last night witch that we'll be talking about today is Irina Sabrova. She was born December 25, 1914, and died April 5, 2000. Irina only completed five grades of school. She went to trade school, becoming a locksmith and a factory worker while taking nursing courses. Arena then entered an aero club and went on to become a flight instructor. At the age of 23, she was already an experienced flight instructor. She joined the Soviet military in October 1941, and during the war, she flew over 1,000 combat missions. She was awarded the title Hero of the Soviet Union. Arena retired from the Air Force in 1948 and joined the Moscow Aviation Institute. So now I'd like to talk about a couple of extraordinary women and a very special mission that they flew. On March 19, 1943, Tamara Pamayetnik and Raisa Sernatchevskaya were out on patrol when they were suddenly surrounded by 42 German bombers. Each woman managed to shoot down two bombers and Tamara continued to fly until she ran out of ammunition. When then Tamara decided to take out a third bomber by ramming into her plane into it, but as she got close, one of her wings was shot off and she spun out of control. Tamara just had just happened to have a parachute that day. She bailed out, landing in a Russian village, and made her way back to base. And here is uh, what happened that night in, in uh, Tamara's own words. There was just Risa and me. I said, let's go. We dived out of the sun straight down into the middle of them. I took two before running out of ammo. I was about to ram a third. I could see the mouse-colored uniform of the tail gunner of the plane I'd picked as my target. Then one of my wings was shot off and I span out of control. I was calm. I didn't want to die. I was ashamed I'd done so little and I'd left Risa all alone. Risa was four months pregnant at the time, one of the few pregnant women to have flown in combat. For her heroism, Tamara was, Tamara was awarded the Order of the Red Banner. So now you know about some heroes of the Soviet Union. Now, many people have called these women fearless. I've seen it, them written about as being fearless in several articles, but they were not. In letters and interviews, these women say that there were plenty of times when they were very afraid, even terrified, but they didn't let their fear stop them from doing what had to be done. This is what it means to be a hero. Not the absence of fear, but the strength to move through the fear and do the work anyway. And if there ever were heroes of the Soviet Union, it was definitely the Night Witches. So uh, now that we've finished learning about the Night Witches, if you want to learn more, here are some books and articles that I recommend. Um, the first book is A Thousand Sisters, The Heroic Airwoman of the Soviet Union in World War II by Elizabeth Ween. It is a fantastic book. Um, uh, it is a teen nonfiction book, so it is a bit long, but it is absolutely wonderful. Um, I, I got a ton of the information for this, um, for this lesson out of this book. I highly recommend it. Um, uh, another book is The Soviet Night Witches, Brave Women Bomber Pilots of World War II by Pamela Dell. This is a really fantastic little nonfiction book. It's really short, it has some really great pictures. And this is where I got the timeline from. Um, so it's a really great book. Uh, and then uh, another book is Defending the Motherland, The Soviet Women Who Fought Hitler's Aces. This is an adult nonfiction book, so it is pretty dense, but it does have a lot of great information in there. And if you want to learn more about the Night Witches and the other women who um, defended the Soviet Union in World War II, I highly recommend this book. 
And the last nonfiction book that I recommend is Spies, Lies, and Disguise, The Daring Tricks and Deeds That Won World War II by Jennifer Swanson. It's a, it's a pretty new book. It's got some really great information about a bunch of different people in World War II, and it has a little section on the Night Witches. So it's a really good one. And then the last book is a, is a fiction book. It's a teen fiction book called Night Witches by Catherine Lasky. And while it is totally fiction, it does give a really nice, uh, perspective as a young woman who uh, joined um, the Soviet military. So if you wanted a fiction book to read about the Night Witches, this is a really good one. And here are a couple of really great articles that I recommend to you if you want to learn more about the Night Witches. Um, the first is um, uh, a New York Times article on Nadia Popova, um, the World War II Night Witch who died at uh, the age of 91 and it's just about her life it's got pictures of her from the from when she was in the war and more current photos it has interviews with her like not long before she died and it's just a really fantastic article with some really great photos and then the uh, second article is the little known story of the night witches an all male, an all-female force in world war ii by eric grunthauser and that was in vanity fair uh, and it's a really great article. So some fantastic photos and interviews and a, just a ton of really great information. Um, I put the links to both of these articles below, the New York Times article and the Vanity Fair article. So if you want to check those out, please do so. Um, I really um, enjoyed making this lesson and I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about the Night Witches. And I'll, I'll see you next month for another homeschool history lesson.